Look development is one of my favorite aspects of the color grading process. But as I've talked about before, look development and color grading are ultimately separate disciplines that require separate tools. So I really try to emphasize the need to study look development as its own discipline and to focus on the tools that are optimal for look development as opposed to simply repurposing our color grading tools. However, we've all been in the position of needing a good look quickly right within Resolve and that's what I want to focus on in this series is the best practices and the things that we can do right within Resolve to build basic looks when we don't have time to go out and source a high quality third party look or to build our own using dedicated skills that we've built up in uh, other systems and other software. What can we do right within Resolve to build basic and effective looks when we're in a hurry and we need to do so quickly? And today we're going to focus on the core essential, the bare minimum, the thing we always want to start with when we're doing any kind of look development, and that's to build an overall creative contrast curve. So that's what we're going to focus on today. Before we dive in, if you are new to the channel, welcome. We love color grading here on this channel. It's all that we talk about. We're in the color page, in Resolve, in all the content that we explore here on the channel. We do two new videos a week, and then we do a live session at the end of every week where we do a Q&A and we discuss everything that we've been covering in the channel that week in depth, and you have the opportunity to come in with your questions or your suggestions for uh, discussion, and we can really go deeper into those subjects than we're able to go in these pre-recorded videos. So if you're into that kind of content, make sure you subscribe, make sure you turn on your notifications, stay in the loop on all the cool stuff that we're doing here on the channel. All right, let's dive in and talk about basic look development here inside of Resolve. So just as a quick refresher, what exactly do I mean when I say a look? When I say look, what I mean is what I'm going to call a macro level creative transform. That means a creative transform that hits all of our images in the same way, a creative transform that does not change. So because we want to do a macro level creative transform in a look, today we are going to be working not here at the clip level of our uh, node graph where we adjust individual shots, we're going to be working at the timeline level where we can adjust all of the shots in our timeline at once. Basically, whatever we do here is going to hit all of our shots in the same way, and it's going to hit all of our shots after whatever color grading is done prior to that. Okay, so that's kind of the area we're going to be focusing on. And today, I want to focus on as I said, the core essential element of any successful look, and that's going to be your creative contrast curve. So here's how we're going to do that. We're going to use our custom curves, and we're going to impose an important constraint because, again, this curve has to work not just for this shot or that shot or this shot, it has to work for all the shots. As a result, one of the constraints we want to impose is to anchor middle gray. That's simply going to mean that a well-exposed shot that goes into the look is going to stay a well-exposed shot when it comes out the other end of the look. Here's how we can go about that. I'm going to turn my gallery on, and here in my toolbox, I've got a power grade that I've saved called DaVinci Wide Gamut Gray. And when I drop this onto a node, you can see that this is really just a preset within my exposure chart DCTL. This is a free download that I'm going to leave a link to in the description for this video. And all I've done is set my total steps to one and my tone curve to DaVinci Intermediate. That's the color space that I'm working in. By the way, I've already set up my color management here today. If you're not familiar with color management or you need a refresher on that, lots of really good content here on the channel where you can uh, read up on color management or watch up on color management uh, to say it more accurately. Um, but we're going to rely on that foundation today. That's the one thing that I've already done prior to uh, starting uh, recording this video here today. All right. So because I am working in DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate as my timeline or my working color space, I've selected Tone Curve of DaVinci Intermediate. And what this is giving me is a patch of middle gray within that working space. And if I create a new serial node by hitting Option S and I tap on this gray patch, you'll see that I'm going to get this single anchor point that aligns right with this tooth that I'm seeing in my histogram of my curves. Once I've done that, I can go over to node number one here and wipe it out. I no longer need it. I just want to have that single anchor point before I begin drawing my creative contrast curve. And what that's going to do is ensure that I don't move my exposure up or down as I'm shaping my creative contrast. So with that in place, I'm simply going to start to create a shoulder and a toe. I'm going to start with the toe here on the bottom and just add a little bit of preferential contrast, but I'm also going to lift the very bottom black point and just sort of shape that bottom end. And something that is important to remember when you're doing look dev, 
Look Dev is not about any one shot. Look Dev is about all the shots. So you really want to be bouncing around and auditioning your adjustments and essentially looking for a sort of best fit as you're building your overall look like so. So I feel like that's a decent starting point for my uh, bottom end of my contrast curve. And now I'm going to go up to the top and just create a little bit of a shoulder. And I'm also going to drop my peak white point as well. How am I deciding what to do? How do I know what's right or wrong here? Well, it's experience, but more than anything, it's just my aesthetic preference. So as long as you've got a good anchor point, there's not anything that is explicitly wrong to do here in your custom curves. You just want to shape something that is gentle and that serves all of your shots well, helps you get all of your shots closer to your intent and your client's intent for the material that you're grading, okay? So I could continue to finesse this and this timeline that I'm working on has a lot more shots than I've even looked at thus far. So that's something I would continue to explore and really finesse. And by the way, a look, just because it's something that we do at the beginning and that affects every shot, it's not something that we have to do once and then forget about and then we can't change it anymore. You can, of course, as you're going through your grading pass, continue to refine your look if you're noticing patterns or trends or things that aren't yet perfect about your look, you can always go back and tweak it, but we wanna get into a good level starting position for this look. And I'd say that for my eye, we are starting to get there now with just a sort of moderate level of contrast that's limiting our black point, limiting our white point, and adding a bit stronger contrast sort of in the mid-tone section of our image here. And again, because we started by anchoring ourselves to DaVinci Wide Gamut Gray, we are uh, leaving our exposure as is. So. Here's the honest truth. If you're wanting to get into look development or you're wanting to do quick look development right within the color page, right within Resolve, this right here is what you need to focus on. Your creative contrast curve is going to be the biggest role player really in any look. And it's something that you can do a really good job of with the limited tools that we have within Resolve. So this is where I would focus. I would really focus on shaping and nuancing just this creative contrast curve. And we're really just gonna add one more ingredient to this today as the core foundation of a successful look that we build right within Resolve. We've got our creative contrast curve, and now we are going to add uh, what we can sometimes, sometimes call split toning, or we could call color contrast. I'm really just going to shape this creative contrast curve by changing the ratio of red, green, and blue that's hitting our shadows versus our highlights, all right? This is something that I'm gonna add previous to this custom curve. So I'm gonna hit Shift S to prepend a serial node. And we're actually gonna do exactly what we just did a moment ago with our gray point. I wanna anchor a neutral point for what I'm about to do uh, in the same way that we anchored our mid gray just a moment ago. So I'm gonna drop my DaVinci Wide Gamut Gray, create a new node, eyedropper that section, and then wipe out my exposure chart DCTL. And now I again have an anchor point for middle gray. And what I'm gonna do is go to my chain link icon here and ungang everything. And I'm just gonna look at adding a complementary color scheme into this image. This is sometimes called a teal and orange scheme uh, if it's done in a stronger way. I don't really think of things as teal and orange or not teal and orange. I just tend to think of them as, like I said, split toning or adding color contrast or color harmony to the image. So for this material, it's gonna look something like this. Let's go back to shot number two here. And I'm gonna start with my blue channel and I'm gonna create another control point kind of down just below my mid gray point and just add a little bit of a rainbow. And right now I'm not worried about going too far. I'm worried about not going far enough. So I'm gonna go nice and strong with this. Then I'm gonna go to my green channel and draw a similar sort of second control point and create a little rainbow there. I'm just gonna go not up quite as far as I did with the blue. And if we pull up our scopes, you can see that I'm starting to kind of stretch the bottom end of the image here on the vector scope toward kind of a cyanish blue, all right? So that's my scheme in the bottom. And then in the highlights, I'm gonna do a similar thing. In the highlights, I'm going to anchor a control point a bit above my mid gray and create a rainbow with my red up top, like so. Red, you're gonna find is very touchy in this curve. It's really easy to go too far with it. But again, we're not too concerned about that right now because I'm gonna show you a technique for taming in whatever we're doing now in just a moment. So I've got some red added in, and now I'm gonna do the same exact thing, or a similar thing anyway with my green, so that I'm adding effectively kind of some gold or some orange into my highlights. And you can play with this relationship of you know, how orange versus how red you're getting by modulating your green up or down accordingly. 
So this is the beginnings of what I'm looking for here. This is adding some color harmony and some color separation uh, and you know just some uh, sort of preferential color palette to this image. And I also wanna start labeling things here. So we're gonna call this split and I'm gonna go back over to node number two. We're gonna call this curve like so. And like I said, if you start here, and then add this one extra ingredient of adding your split tone uh, scheme here upstream, you can create a really, really successful, really, really gentle and dynamic look using just these two ingredients. So this is really what I would focus on at the foundational level, at the simple, I've got 10 minutes to build a look that works type of scale. These are the two things that I would focus on. Overall contrast curve and some kind of color harmony or split toning scheme if that's what you want for your material. You may not even want that, in which case you could keep it as simple as having an overall creative contrast curve. Lots of color grades have been done. I've done lots of color grades using nothing but a slight preferential creative contrast curve. So this is your foundation and the details that you express here in these two uh, sort of components of your look can have a huge influence on the success of your overall color grade. But let's talk just a little bit more about this split toning piece. So you can see I've got you know this combination of blue and green pushed into my shadows, a combination of red and green pushed into my highlights, and I've got a couple of variables that I can play with from here. First of all, you can see that because I set these additional anchors kind of above and below middle gray, I'm essentially protecting the middle exposed areas of my image and I'm keeping them from getting biased, either warm or cool, because I've got this sort of cutout where everything is being left neutral, which uh, can be uh, a nice, detail to add, but you could of course get rid of these completely and just control click these control points and have your split tone scheme run right up to middle gray from the bottom and then uh, start diverging from middle gray as you're climbing above it almost immediately. So that's an option that's totally available to you. I just like to kind of lock those things off and have a bit of a neutral section to my split toning scheme. And the other thing that I'll emphasize is once you've got a sort of general baseline for where things are at, you're going to find pretty quickly that even if you pop out your custom curves and get a bit of a bigger view as a result, these control points get pretty fussy to really, really nuance. So what I'll often do when I'm really getting into that stage of just wanting to get things kind of overall dialed in is I'm going to stop adjusting these control points and go over to my sliders over here. So let's say that I just want to do a little bit less of that warm push in the high end. I'm just going to bring back my red and my green a little bit like so. And so now I'm getting a little bit less of that warm push than I was getting before. Another option, if you like everything that you're seeing and it all feels good and you just wanna scale back the entire scheme a little bit, would be to go over to your key output gain here and set that key output gain to say a 0.5. And now we're only gonna get 50% of that scheme. And remember with look development, really the name of the game is we wanna move everything closer to where it needs to go. Maybe we move everything way closer Maybe we only move things a little bit closer, but the trick is that we wanna make sure nothing is getting further away. So if this split toning scheme were working for 10 shots, but then by the time we get into this material, it really isn't holding up anymore and it doesn't feel right, that would be an indicator to me that I need to scale back on that scheme because it's not enough that it makes a bunch of shots look good, it has to make all of the shots look good or something needs to change within the look. That's a difference in mentality that we need to adopt when we're doing look dev versus when we are color grading individual shots. So like I said, if you can just nail these two ingredients and practice getting good at dialing these in in a hurry and getting them uh, working for the material that you are grading. This is a great foundation for a look. This is really the beginning of look development and you can do it right within the Resolve color page. Look development is a huge subject and it goes far beyond this and it goes pretty quickly into skills and tools that are separate and distinct from things that we tend to do in Resolve, in the color page as colorists, but this foundation right here can really set you on a path to success when you do need to build your own looks. If you don't wanna build your own looks, if you don't have time, if you want a more advanced or a more sophisticated look, then you can pull off with the tools that we are going to explore in this series. That's really why I made my Voyager LUT pack. It comes in two forms. The Essentials is 17 great single LUTs that you can drop into your timeline section of your node graph, just like we did these components here. And you're instantly going to get a really sophisticated, really great, robust, dynamic look 
for the material that you're grading. And the uh, Voyager pack also comes with a pro version or comes in a pro version, I should say, where you have individual components, individual modules, almost along the lines of what we just did today, except they've already been built and they've been built using color science that's not available to us right within Resolve. So both of those uh, forms of the Voyager pack are great options if you do want the ability to quickly dial in a look right within Resolve without needing to become a color scientist or to build up an entire practice uh, within uh, the look development realm. Those are great options. If you're liking what we're talking about today, or if you're interested in this footage and grading this footage for yourself, another thing I wanna point out is we are uh, starting the wait list for my Colorist Career Accelerator course. It's coming up super soon. We always have a blast in this course. It's an opportunity to get hands-on and in-depth and go through a structured curriculum on how to take your career to the next level as a colorist. doesn't matter if you're a working colorist today or if you've never color graded a job professionally. If you want to accelerate your career, if you want to see it move to that next level, that is all we are focused on for the four days of that course is taking you from where you're at and building up your professional practice so that you can really have a great run at maxing out your potential as a colorist. And we cover not only color grading technique, we cover not only the uh, nuts and bolts of working in, in Resolve, we talk about business, we talk about negotiation, we talk about how to bill, how to estimate, how to quote, how to invoice, all these things that are critical to your success as a professional colorist. So if you're interested in uh, that course, it's coming up very soon. And uh, if you wanna stay in the loop on that, there is a link in the description for today's video to sign up for the waitlist for that course and to stay in the loop as we uh, open up. That course invariably sells out. It is sold out, I think, within a day or two every time that we've run it thus far. So make sure you sign up if you're interested so you're in the loop and you can jump on it if you decide that it's the right fit for you. And as I said, if you want to grade this very footage that I'm looking at here today, that's part of what we offer in the Colorist Career Accelerator is this practice footage, which you can practice on and also use in your reel so that you can start showing people your new skills as a colorist. So some really exciting things coming up. But regardless of those things, if you can... Take these ideas that we've talked about today, put in a little bit of practice with them. You can have your color grading practice and your look dev practice in a place that is going to allow you to quickly build clean and dynamic and effective looks for your color grades, even when you don't have all the time in the world and even when you just need to quickly put something together so that you can get started with your grade.